What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Hey, hey. What do you say? Hey, hey. Chester, we got to get the right fly. Pick the right fly. Which one do you think is going to be it? Which one do you think? Do you think that's going to be it? Do you think this one here? Which one? Do you think that's going to be the winner? I don't know, Chester. I don't know. Give me five, buddy. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Yes. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. Chester, you put mud all over the box, sand all over the box. in the boat. I'm gonna go for right. Yes. You wanna go? Give me five. <laughs> yes, I just told him I was gonna take him fishing and he gets so excited. Okay, look at the box. Look at the box. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think of the box? Ah. Come here, Chester. Come here, baby. Don't get ahead of me. Daddy will get him, I promise. Did he move on that one, Emmett? Moved on, but didn't take. Okay, I didn't see him. I, I'd still give it to him if, a couple different ways. Well, we'll give him a chance for an equal opportunity fish catcher. All right, this one will be on him. Boom! Coming down the outside lane. It's coming into him. Come on, baby. Tuck now, 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 now. Here it comes. There's one right down there. Oh! All right, Gary! Pick the dry! Puppy had no chance. He was worried. He was holding just under the surface. I know. That's great. All right. What fly now, my good man? dry fly. You know, you use that attractor and you expect to catch more on the nymph. At least, at least on a day like this. There's yeah. some days when I expect to catch more on the attractor. Uh -huh. But the nice thing about the attractor is you always do have that secondary shot. Now he, nice he came up and nailed the, uh, he came up and nailed the attractor. Well, which, which fly? Was that that double wing? It's the double wing. It's, it's the orange double wing and she's set up beautifully for this day on this river. That's, That's great. the theory of the double wing, is All that right. there's different colors and they each have their, their time and place. Well, I'm going to get down below him. This is the time and place. <laughs> I get Chester back here. Chester, come here, love. All right. There we go. Oh, what do you think of that? What do you think of that, Chester? Chester thinks it's great. <laughs> oh, nice fall brown. Chester says he came all the way to Utah to see these Green River fish. To give, oh, yeah. give him a kiss, Chester. Kiss the baby. Want a kiss? Kiss him. Kiss him. Okay. Oh, I give a nice little Locker. lick. Ah, came out easy. Okay. Thanks to Barbless Hooks. <laughs> All right, Chester, you want to look at him one more time? Fall colors. There you go. <laughs> Fall colors. A little so, bit of. So the aspect of and... color is choosing the right color, and it's a fairly simple theory. Light has color. If you match the color of the fly, at least the body, to the color of the light, it's going to look more intense. That makes a better attractor. Okay, say goodbye, Chester. I know Chester's there shaking he here. He's, he says, <laughs> I want to go get him. <laughs>
Now we went through it step by step underwater, testing each phase of this fly. It was a long process, it was a fun process. I'll explain why we came up with each part of this pattern. Let's start with the tail. Sparkle yarn, dazzle air. Now we take four ply knitting yarn, you can see there's various plies to this, separate it, cut a couple plies off, comb it out, and we tie it in as a very short tail, not long. You don't want this to be hanging way beyond the end of the hook. We are gonna create a hot spot of color off the back end of this fly. Now the double wing comes in various color series. This is the lime double wing. There's orange, yellow, blue. We're gonna put in a little bit, bit of floss here. We're gonna put in this floss for what we call separation. It's gonna create a very narrow part that will not obscure the features above it. We're always cognizant of that. We're always aware that the fish are looking up. So many people will pick up a fly and hold it out at arm's length and say, ah, this looks good. Now you look at it from the bottom and look up at it. We like to use white floss. White is a good non-obstructive color, reflects a lot of light. Simple step. The fly is called the double wing. Now there's the tail, there's a back wing, and there's a front wing. We're now going to put on the back wing. We use elk or deer hair. This happens to be a lime green. I already have it stacked. Want it fairly neat. Very important. Do not lay this way beyond the end of that yarn. Have the tips barely come beyond the edge of the yarn. Now, of course, it will flare when you go ahead and tie it down, and you want it to do that a little bit. I always like to take the stubs and run through them. I like to and get them very strong on that hook shank so they won't roll around, so I won't lose my back wing. Cut those stubs flush. We're just gonna cover those up. And we now have two layers of color. Attraction. You have different characteristics on a fly. You have color. You have bulk, you have size, you have width. We try to address every one of those characteristics in the double wing. Okay, think about the color for a minute. One, very bright green, and then you have the background of olive above it. We're gonna go forward on the fly, and we're gonna create width. Tie in a palmered hackle. This is a grizzly dyed olive. Leave that there for a moment. We will dub a rough thick body. Going to use a touch method of dubbing. Now for the touch method, I chop up sparkle yarn at about an eighth inch. And then I toss it into a blender and I come with a very fine bit of dubbing that I can hold and just touch to the tacky wax. It creates a fuzzy body that allows each filament to stand out and remain bright. Wrap the body. Now, we have the brightness again of the antron. Now we get a little bit of bulk, because it can be a fairly thick body as we wrap it forward. At this point, wrap the hackle. 
Why did fish respond to each aspect? Why did they want to fly that had some aspect of width to it? We don't know. We really don't. We can speculate. We can say that this buzz of hackle standing out to the side creates an impression of enough food, of enough calories for the fish to make a commitment to rise. All we know is that it happened. Now I take that buzz hackle and I clip it flat on the top and then, because I don't want to obscure the color of the body, we clip it flat on the bottom. And what we are left with, not a thick, not a brushy hackle out to the side, just the hint of width that lays out on the water. We're now going to put in the second wing. We've addressed bulk, we've addressed width. Certainly the double wing will add even more bulk, but it's also going to accentuate the color. We're going to use kip tail, or calf tail as it's called. We definitely do not use calf body hair, whether for a trude, whether for a double wing. Calf body hair is nice and neat and straight and it makes a pretty fly. Unfortunately, it holds a lot of water and doesn't help the fly float. The kip tail, because it's crinkled, will throw that water off. So don't go for beauty all the time. Already have the hair stacked. Again, do not go way beyond those tips, just barely beyond the tips of the deer hair or elk hair. I'm going to show you a trick. This also applies to any downwing fly. Could be a royal trude, could be a picket pin. If you left the, the wing just like that, it would pull out. I could grab it with my fingers and pull it right out right now. But if I take it and I lock it in, lift my bobbin up, pull that wing up, drop the bobbin around it. I've come around the back and I've circled it. Hold it again and you see what's happening. I hold the bobbin up, come right around the wing and drop it down on this side. And then wrap three or four times. It is now locked in there. I could take a pair of pliers and I could not pull that wing out. If you're going to take the time to tie a fly, might as well tie a good one. It takes just as much time to tie a bad one and that one's going to fall apart on you after a few fish. I'm going to finish it off with a head hackle. We use Grizzly for that. I like that black and white contrast. We have what I call a salvation fly. This fly has saved me so many times. It seems like whenever there's a camera on and I'm fishing, whether it's a still camera or a video camera, and I have to catch a fish, I can turn to the double wing. I was on Rock Creek with Don Roberts. We wanted a decent sized fish. Didn't have to be great, 15 to 20 inches, someplace in that range. I couldn't get a thing. I went over my favorite pool, 40 minutes, a number of different patterns, never touched a fish, never had one move. I put the double wing on, it was the right color, floated it down, about the third cast, bang, had a nice rainbow, took the pictures. Still had enough light, went back up, bang, got a nice cutthroat. Two fish over a pool that I just flogged my heart out on and had caught nothing. I want to explain something about this fly, and I can explain it better once I take it out of the vise. So I'm going to go ahead and whip finish it here. I want to explain the hot spot of color, because if we're going to have to define why this fly is different, I think it becomes evident in the name once you look at it from the bottom.
find myself using the pattern more and more. Rough water fly, definitely. Pull fish up, definitely. So I love it to bounce the riffles on Rock Creek, on the Madison, on the Farmington in Connecticut. Had a super day on the Farmington in Connecticut. Let's look at it from the bottom. See how we have that band of white floss that kind of stands out there nice and clear and clean. You have three layers of color. A fish looking up is entertained by that hot spot. You have the brightness and the color of the sparkle yarn. You have the overlay of the back wing. And then, because a lot of light that hits the water comes bouncing back up, the reflectiveness of the white kip tail catches it and bounces it back around this area to really illuminate it. Hot spot of color, the width, the bulk, the size, the theories of attraction, the double wing. There it is. We tried very, very hard to come up with a very sexy, wonderful name for this fly. Agitator, Gremlin, Terminator. But we just kept calling it the double wing among ourselves and that's the name that stuck. <laughs>